I want to introduce to you my wife and my children. Let's give it up for the team. So check this out. I just want you to understand the sacrifice that goes into this. You guys are thinking like, they make this look really easy. But we've got kids from ages five to almost 10 months. And we love you guys so much. We care about you so much that we woke them up early this morning to come into this auditorium and to remind you that, hey, you may have not come from this, you may not have come from a, a family like this, but you can have one someday. Yeah. You can someday have a family with children and say, hey, I'm gonna raise them up differently than the way I was raised, right? So I wanted you to see this, to know that this is for each of you. Hear me now, this is for each of you. Just like Ren and Lauren, our husband and wife, right? And they're together. Wow. This is for each of us, right? We can have a healthy lifestyle, a healthy family, and then we can go out into the world and make a difference. it's like you don't get any sleep like the night before these things like Malachi wakes up wants mommy then the baby wants mommy whenever you do stuff like this now with the family it's like it's case by case who's gonna like, be impacted with the morning routines of like oh wow mommy and daddy are gonna be here or they're coming with us and they don't want to get up and do that so either way you're gonna have a, a struggle for all the parents that are trying to do what we do it's like oh yep. that looks easy ah, there are struggles and battles that's why i'm always like man i don't want that life of like a, a person that's like an entertainer or like someone that's in that world because it's like man you got to like constantly be away from your family but if you incorporate them into it that's really the balance you got to be able to do both so it's nice that this is local i know we're coming back then we'll party later You want to like kick us off in prayer or something? Sure, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Lord, we just thank you for today. Even for the interest already, God, you showed us even yesterday there's going to be an anointing on us that people are going to ask questions. What are these shirts about? What are you doing here? In curiosity, we pray that it would open up doors of conversations, not only with Miss Trudy, but everyone we meet today. Protect us, shield us. We just declare the blood of Jesus over this land right now. We claim it. We claim it in your name. And that you would just do something unique through Miss Trudy's story, through Sonia and Frank, everywhere we go today. Just cover us, Lord, protect us, and thank you for unity in this team. In Jesus' name, amen. I think it went great. I think that we got just little nuggets of who she is and like just her backstory because people are going to walk by here every single day and not realize all of the depth and the knowledge and the history and the resources and just how much she's actually giving back to the community and even strangers. Like she said, strangers have come back and like shared certain stories of the things that she's spoken to their life. So I just feel like it was exactly what it was supposed to be. I think we're just going to encourage people to say, you don't know the full book until you actually stop and read the chapters. So I think it's just, I think it's cool. This is fun because I get to just be a part of learning more about who she is and how it's impacting this awesome city. So yeah, powerful stuff. So Clean Slate Living started based on my own personal story. I had a major issue with drug and alcohol usage. And when I came back to the Lord, I felt like there was a story to tell. People would say, wow, you have a unique story, a unique testimony. I was like, what is it? And then he would tell me, he's like, oh, this is different. So we would pray about myself and church leadership, the people that were discipling me in my church. We would pray about how can Matt use this testimony? And it became Clean Slate Living. I got involved after we got together and we realized we're going to do this as a team. So it was just really exciting because we feel like not only is our marriage something that's beautiful and amazing, but it's mission focused, that we're on this mission together to change lives. Like we feel like God has been waiting to put us together so that we can complete the mission together. It wasn't this individual race that we were on. We were on a journey as husband and wife showing 
our audience that family is beautiful and that doing it with your children and them being a part of it is so important. We bring our kids out after every presentation and we say, hey, the society might say one thing about family and career and all this, but we say that family is amazing and beautiful and it's something we should strive for and to have kids because they are the legacy that's going to take on what you've created. You have an anointing of hospitality and love and people walk in here. That's what we felt when we first came. And we love that you guys are constantly going after the one, right? You're, you're finding that one person that comes in that's came in for maybe a book and they end up getting the gospel fed yeah. to them in, in practical terms. We love you guys. We wanted to let you know that this was not just for us to come in and like elevate your business, but we wanted to affirm you and let you know that we see you, we're behind you, we're cheering you on. We've had some supporters and we wanted to give you guys, we have a card with $500 in here. Just know that we're here for you and many people are gonna to continue to come with Lord. So we just wanna pray with you guys and just yeah. you know thank close you. this time. So Lord, we just thank you. What I went through as a child mm -hmm. and then trying to commit suicide and surviving it, mm -hmm. it makes mm -hmm. it, it makes my fight for God and, and this place so much more because that's why I want to reach people mm. more. You know that all the suffering that we're going through. Mm. That, mm. That, that's all of it. Mm -hmm. That's why this store is so important. Mm -hmm. Because I want people to know that there is Christ mm -hmm. and that you aren't alone. Even if you come in here just to buy a candle mm -hmm. or buy a bag of coffee or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, but there's people that come in here and need that hope. Mm -hmm. And if sharing my uncomfortable testimony mm -hmm. will help someone, mm -hmm. that's what my life is all worth it. Clean Slate Living and Rewrite Tomorrow were names that I prayed about. It wasn't just a catchy slogan and a catchy name. Like God really gave me those words, those names, those slogans and phrases. And Rewrite Tomorrow became the tagline, right? And we had these wristbands that I'm wearing now. And what would happen is we would give out a wristband to people that we would encounter, right? Or come across, say, hey, you can always rewrite your tomorrow. And it was a takeaway for them to learn about who we are and what we do. And we would remind them, you're worthy. You're worthy to clean your slate. So there was a guy that had obtained one of these, he had a clean slate wristband, and he was at a business event, and the NASDAQ was saying, we're gonna rewrite tomorrow. We're gonna rewrite tomorrow. And, mm -hmm. and he was like, wait a minute, what? So he approached them and said, hey, have you ever heard of clean slate? And they were familiar with who we were, and they had decided that they were gonna use that slogan for, for their business. So when we found out about it, we're like, this is awesome, let's reach out, mm -hmm. and they were ecstatic to finally get to partner with us because we used the slogan for two different reasons, and we were able to go and do the morning bell. At the New York Stock Exchange at the NASDAQ, the Clean Slate Living team is there. Got to ring the bell, they treated us really nice. This was something that we always had as a desire before we came back to the Lord. It was like, wow, someday I, I hope I could be in Times Square on a billboard, right? Everyone always wishes for that fame, right? And that moment of, of shine, and here we were, in the middle of Times Square, on billboards, on these huge jumbotrons, with our friends and family, people that we love, sharing what it means to rewrite tomorrow. And it didn't even feel like that was important anymore. So it's almost like the things that we thought were the gold were meaningless. It was nice. It was during rush hour in New York City. That's cool, right? But it didn't impact or change us any more than it would if we were just in somebody's small group or at a recovery center or at a school sharing what it means to rewrite tomorrow. Yeah, in the first beginning of the organization, when I got involved, we were mostly doing school presentations. We've done recovery centers, we've done women's homes. Our main focus was schools. Who's excited about this morning? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with something fun, there might be some serious moments, there might be some moments where like, yo, listen up, man. Who likes free stuff? So we're here to encourage you. You're unique, you're different. This world needs every single one of you to reach your purpose and reach your calling. The five-year-old Matt, who's getting bullied physically, that said, hey, I gotta find a way to stick up for myself. I gotta find an identity. So I put on this mask and said, I'm gonna go around and battle people. I'm gonna break them down with my words and I'm gonna tell them how I feel and abuse them the way I was abused. And that was the totally wrong way to address my problem. I make bad choices. Who wants 20 hours? 
I'm gonna crumble it up a little bit. Do you still want this $20? You do. It's on the ground, get a little dirty, step on it. Do you still want this $20? What are we trying to say to you guys? No matter what, this $20 remains with the same value. So if you've gone through some things, if your life has been a little dirty, or maybe you're ashamed of things, the value and the purpose and the calling on your life is still the same. I love that just scanning all those messages and like one-to-one -one interactions after we do an assembly, like these students are just like, I was thinking about killing myself today. But my friend texted me that, hey, we're gonna skip class and there's a presentation. And I came to the presentation and I'm hearing about I'm worthy, I have worth, I'm valued, I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. I believe that about myself. That's what I love about Clean Slate, honestly. Some of the stories we've seen that really have just stood out, just kids who have come up to us and just shared how they've taken the message home. I remember when we were in Guyana, just the response of people who just felt like they were seen, felt like they were heard, how they went home, they shared what they learned and it actually made an impact on their family and their friends about their worthiness, about their self-esteem. So that to me has been the most impactful. After the pandemic, um, everything kind of shut down and we were not getting into schools anymore. So we really were just praying about what direction Clean Slate was supposed to go in. And we were like, okay, well, we're not in schools. So that was the only reason why we weren't sharing our faith was because we weren't allowed to. So now we're like, okay, well, we still feel this pull to share this clean slate message. We thought that why don't we start creating video content? Mm -hmm. So we just started praying through what that's gonna look like and we started doing that. So I'm about to go and give Frank and Sonia some beloved merch gear, some shirts, but Ken, who's been helping us do behind the scenes video camera work, we're about to bless him and what he does he has no idea we're about to do this. He's just been following us around for the last couple of days and we're gonna remind him that he's seen. So let's go do this. I don't know if you know the relationship with everyone, but so we have obviously Sean, who's our film guy, but Ken has, he came from Florida with his family and he has his own organization where he wants to capture what's going on behind the scenes within people's organizations, lives, like Melissa. So he literally came here, but the behind the scenes of that was he helped us in Atlanta with our Hope series. And he drove from Texas, shot that, did all that work. Then he met us in Texas, helped us with some of our stuff, like some of our content and things that we've been like really wanting to do, things that we were praying for. And we were like, man, like we've been praying for guys like Sean and Ken. And they were just like answers to prayer because we didn't have people that we trust to do all this. So this is like a really fun moment because Ken is one of the people that we want to bless because <laughs> we love you and we appreciate you and we believe in what you and Noel are doing, man. So we just want to honor you. This is a blessing from people that support Clean Slate Living. There's $500 in here for you. I know you've gone through a lot. The future of Clean Slate is that it's a movement. It's always been a movement. Mm -hmm. It's never just been a one person show. So now we have this content that people can share. They can say, wow, I believe in what it means to clean my slate, to rewrite my tomorrow and I declare myself worthy. And now they can share that with someone that's in need as a token of love and say, hey, you might wanna watch this. This might be for you or it might be for someone that you know. And in that, they can also understand that God loves them. That they could see that this is transformational content. This isn't just a bunch of people that have talent, but there's an anointing on what we're doing. And we want people to feel that as they're watching these pieces of film, this artwork, the productions, all the things that we're gonna put together so that people can really understand that it's never too late to clean your slate. We know the only way to rewrite tomorrow is through Jesus. Rewrite tomorrow, rewrite tomorrow, rewrite tomorrow. Hear me, this is important because you guys are going to be accountants. I want you to do something for me. And the 
isn't like for shock value, but I want you to have this. This isn't a charitable gift. I believe that there's something in you as a leader it has nothing to do with your jersey, it has nothing to do with that, that you are going to be an ambassador of rewriting tomorrow in this building. It's amazing what you guys are doing. You guys are really touching the world. If there's someone watching this that, that doesn't know who Jesus is, if they don't know anything about the gospel and they know nothing about clean slate living, we want them to know that you are worthy to start over, no matter what you've done. You're looking at the product of prayer, blessing, favor, all of those things, and numerous other words that I could use, how God took me from a lifestyle that was very destructive, even violent at times, toxic, renewed me, redeemed me, and then casted a vision for something that I had no idea would escalate to what it is now. And that's for everyone.